Explorers of Ixalan, not to be confused with Rivals of Ixalan, is not a Magic the Gathering expansion set, but instead a self-contained multiplayer Magic the Gathering game. Playing as one of four rival tribes, a multiplayer melee game of Magic is added to by means of a tile-based map that grants bonuses to your gameplay as you try and beat your opponents to the golden city of Orizaka. This video will be presented in three parts, components and setup, instructions on how to play, and of course a gameplay review. Hopefully this video will help you not only understand how to play this board game-like Magic the Gathering product, but also help you determine whether or not it's worth it to you. Let's take a look. Explorers of Ixalan contains the following. 50 map tiles and 36 plus one plus one counters. Four cardboard deck boxes illustrated with artwork for each deck. Four 60 card Magic the Gathering decks. 20 double-sided tokens, and of course a sorting tray and rules insert. The sorting tray has a space for four spin-down die, but oddly this product does not come with any spin-down die. The map tiles, which are the key component, except of course for the Magic the Gathering decks which are included, come in three numerical varieties, one, three, and six, which represent the mana cost to explore and activate their effects. These effects are either an event, site, or quest. Each player must select one of the four tribes, pirates, merfolk, dinosaur riders, or vampire conquistadors. After selecting their tribe, each player takes the appropriate scout marker and deck and sets aside the tokens and plus one plus one counters that they will need. Real setup begins as you build the map. Before anything else, find the six cost map tile named Orizaka, the Golden City, and set it aside. Separate the other map tiles into three piles, one cost, three cost, and six cost. Shuffle each of these piles, face down of course. Now without turning over the tiles, choose 16 one cost, 10 three cost, and three six cost tiles. You will add Orizaka, the Golden City, into the pile of six cost tiles. These six cost tiles will first be arranged at the center of the board like so, followed by a perimeter of three cost tiles and finally an ocean of one cost tiles. Make sure each player has a way of keeping track of their own life total, and now you're ready to play. Explorers of Ixalan is a melee multiplayer game, meaning that you can attack multiple players at once and you are essentially battling all other players in this game. Each player begins with 20 life. The starting player is determined randomly. During combat, you may attack multiple opponents. Anytime a card refers to an opponent, it means any of the other players, even if you've made a temporary pact with them. Using the map. Map tiles bring the game to different locations across Ixalan. You can discover one tile on each of your turns, but only at a time when you could cast a sorcery. Discovering a tile reveals its bonus. Some tiles are one-turn effects, while others last for the entire game. A map tile can't be discovered if it's connected to another map tile with a lower cost. To discover a tile, pay its cost, turn the tile face up, and do what it says. Reading the tile explains the tile. Don't worry, there's no particularly complicated effects here. In fact, I'd say most of it is rather simplistic, but I'll save that for the review later in the video. There are three kinds of tiles. Event tiles, quest tiles, and site tiles. Event tiles have an immediate effect and are removed from play when they resolve. Effect events cannot be countered, but players can can respond to an event by casting instants or activating abilities. Quest tiles reward you when certain in-game conditions are met. When you discover a quest, place it face up in front of you. Once a quest is complete, the tile is removed from play. Sight tiles are placed in front of the player. Each has an ongoing effect that immediately starts affecting the game. If a player leaves the game, all quest and sight tiles in front of that player are removed from play. If any of that player's tile effects are waiting to resolve, they cease to exist and have no effect. 
Eight, scout markers. Each player has one scout marker. If you discover a tile on your turn, you may then place your scout marker on any three cost or six cost tile that becomes available as a result. Your scout marker reserves a map tile for you until your next turn. You don't necessarily have to discover that tile on your next turn, but no other player may discover it until then. Remove your scout marker at the beginning of your next turn. Winning the game. You win the game by defeating all of your opponents by reducing their life totals to zero. Please note, none of the map tiles have negative effects for the person who discovers them. Review. Explorers of Ixalan is ever closer to an idea that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro have been flirting with for some time now, a Magic the Gathering board game. Previous attempts at this were largely unsuccessful, where Magic IP was simply overlaid onto an existing property such as HeroScape, but where the quality of the game pieces was tanked to such an extent that there was nothing magic about that game. In Explorers, you are literally playing Magic the Gathering. It's the game. You have Magic the Gathering gathering pre-constructed decks, although you are playing it in a slightly different format. In fact, calling Explorers its own Magic the Gathering format is the most accurate and honest way to look at it. It reminded me in many ways of a watered-down plane chase, where regular gameplay is altered, enhanced, and ultimately accelerated by random power-ups and power-downs that fly back and forth between players as a melee battle ensues. The decks here are the typical pre-constructed fare. They don't look and play like competitive magic decks, and instead attempt to tell a story or capture a flavor by running one to two copies of most cards, which are largely low-powered or high-costed, and though these decks are balanced enough against one another, it doesn't mean you and your friends won't be dirtling around with them until a surprise creature pump gets flipped. Here's the ultimate question. Do you like sitting down with two to three other players, each of you with an intro pack, and I mean intro pack, not planeswalker deck, and then playing a multiplayer game with those intro packs? That's essentially what this is. The island exploration is fairly linear, and game tiles lack much in the way of variety or strategy. Lords of Waterdeep, this is not, although that could have been amazing. Furthermore, this game can in no way be picked up and played by non-Magic players. In fact, at no point do the included instructions even attempt to explain how to play Magic the Gathering, despite the fact that being able to play Magic the Gathering is 100% necessary for this game. In the instructions, when it says that you take a mulligan, typical of a Magic game, it doesn't even clarify what that is or means. So. You're either an established Magic player, or you're not going to be able to do anything with this box. And its MSRP is $64.99. Is that worth it to established players? In a word, no. In many words, are you kidding me? Established Magic players looking for casual fun and value have so many other options. For less money, you can pick up an Arch Enemy Anthology, which in addition to offering the diverging alternate format for your fun casual play, also has a host of cards that might actually interest players in their real Magic decks. Hey, for a few bucks more, and not many more, a plane chase anthology can be picked up, not to mention the number of commander precons, dual decks, and other supplemental products that $64.99 can buy. Pretty sure $64.99 is more than Lords of Waterdeep, more than Seven Wonders, more than Dominion, and this is giving you way less than those games. And since this is for Magic players, established Magic players, let's look at the cards you get. There's a handful of individual cards that have some financial value, although mostly for Commander players. Shared Animosity, Aggravated Assault, and Time Warp have impressive price tags currently. And yes, there are several cards from Adaptive Automation to Quicksilver Amulet that are in the $5 to $6 range. However, the vast majority of these decks is the usual two-cent bulk jank.
final conclusion? While it's an interesting diversion and comes close to being a Magic the Gathering board game, Explorers of Ixalan offers slow, grindy gameplay that becomes randomly accelerated by overturning tiles. The repeat gameplay is very linear, as there is little to no variety after an initial game is held. The components are cheap and minimal, and this could have been better done as a new plane chase expansion or some kind of subset of cards for something like that. At the price of $64.99, almost no cards of even minimal value or interest are included. This is essentially like buying four old-style intro packs for far, far more than they are or ever will be worth. Grade D- for Do Not Buy. I hope very much this video has been of some help to you. You can help me out by remembering to like, share, subscribe, or just by leaving a message. Let me ask you this question. Do you think Magic the Gathering works in any form like this, like Arena, as a board game? Or do you think Magic is something that should always stay in the cards? And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.